on this slide we talk about a vanishing theorem of sayer now we have already talked a similar vanishing theorem for op and d so you should just revisit the result of the theorem we have just discussed before to this theorem so this is theorem 4.6 on the reference so you start with x as a projective algebraic variety and f a coherent sheaf on x then we have 1 for all i greater or equal to 0 this cohomology group hi x comma f is a finite dimensional k vector space yeah for op and d you can see this clearly the previous theorem precisely describes this result of finite dimensional uh, k vector space second is there is an integer n not depending upon f such that for all d greater than this fixed integer and all i greater than 0 these cohomology groups vanish now again this is shown in the previous theorem there you see that these are non vanishing only for d equals to 0 or d highly negative so you actually if you take any d positive these groups will automatically become 0 so the first is we take a very simple case say this projective algebraic variety is embedded in some space pn and then by construction what we do is we create a new sheaf i star f which will act on pn and uh, by doing this we can put x equals to pn now this construction we have explained before but it is also given on page 2 point uh, page 121 2.11 so essentially what is this essentially i star f only acts on components of x in pn so i star f is a sheaf on pn but it acts only on components of x and it acts precisely in the same way as f would now if x is pn the sheaf is of the form opn d and this opn d satisfies 1 and 2 this was the result of the previous theorem now case 2 is for the arbitrary coherent sheaf so you start with s as a the graded ring so s is equal to k of x0 all the way to xn so this is the graded ring and f is equal to m till d where m is a graded s module of finite type so now you see we have n plus 1 variables till n so anyway the cohomology group if i put h i where i is greater than n plus 1 they will be zero yeah we have only n plus 1 variables so m is a graded s module of finite type so therefore it will have a set of generators of m and these generators have the corresponding degrees and uh, these are n1 to nr are nothing but homogeneous degree of these generators now then there is a surjection and here we will just write the surjection there is a easier proof of this entire theorem on page 228 of hartshorn and it gives the entire trail of how this surjection comes about So here I am just following Daniel Perrin, but uh, after reading Hartshorn, I think Hartshorn has a much better proof. And uh, if you trail back from the results given there, you get a much better explanation of how this projection works. So what we do is we associate x i with obviously the basis i here. So this s minus n i represents the minus n i graded part of the 
ring. So obviously if you multiply by xi, you land up in the zero part. So now we pass on to the corresponding sheaves. So m corresponds to f and this direct sum of s minus ni we write as l. Now s minus ni would transform to opn minus ni. So um, I just want to recall that there is another definition of coherent sheaf. And in this definition, the following map OXN, that is copies of OXN times to this F, this map is onto. Okay, so what is this N I have written here? So N is nothing but the kernel of the uh, this is a kernel sheaf. So the kernel sheaf is also of finite type. So we prove one by descending induction on I. So first is for I greater or equal to N plus one this HIF is zero. Yeah, so because we have associated a ring S with it and ring S only has N plus one variables. So when you try forming the check complex, it will automatically become zero, which will make cohomology groups zero. Now we have this exact sequence of sheaves and we form the long exact sequence of it. So assume it is true for I plus one that uh, the result is true for i plus 1. So we are just proving part 1 of the theorem. So that is h i x comma f as a finite dimensional vector space. Now I'm just writing the long exact sequence associated with the short, short exact sequence of sheaves. Now what is dimension of h i f? So we just use the rank nullity theorem and the exactness. So we say this dimension of image of F which is equal to kernel of G plus dimension of image of G. So kernel of G plus image of G would sh give, should give you the dimension of HIF but kernel of G is equal to image of F because we are in the short, uh, we are in an exact sequence. Now image of f is less than or equal to image of uh, dimension of h i l and image of g is less than or equal to dimension of h i plus 1 n. Now this i plus 1 part is finite by induction. And as I mentioned before the sheaf l, this sheaf l See, it is associated with this graded ring S minus NI, I is equal to 1 to R. So this will, when you pass it on to this sheaves, this is how it will look like, OPN minus NI. In fact, uh, as I said before, Hartron does a much, much better job by simply associating this with uh, these OPN minus NI directly. So dimension of h i l is finite because it is of this form o p n minus n i direct sums so we have been able to prove part one of the theorem that h i x f is a finite dimensional space on this slide we finish the proof by talking about the part two of the theorem and we want to finish part two of the theorem again we will use descending induction and we will try to prove this one particular property PI. So we are now going to prove the part two of the theorem for arbitrary coherent sheaves. So we will prove the following property and we will use descending induction for it. Again, you can find the proof of this theorem on page 126 of uh, Daniel Perrin's book algebraic geometry so pi is so you fix i as a positive integer then for any coherent sheaf f 
So f is a coherent sheaf. There is an integer n naught. such that for any p greater or equal to i and d greater or equal to n naught this dimension of h p f t is zero so this is the property we need to prove so for p equals to n plus 1 the above holds this we have talked about before because the check complexes will just become zero and thus the cohomology groups will also become zero now you assume it holds for i plus one so we have p greater or equal to i plus one and sum So this is what we have. Dimension of the kernel sheaf. Now we have shifted everything by D is zero. And this is zero. Yeah, because P is greater or equal to I plus one. Now we try to fix this integer N naught. So fix N naught as soup of d0 comma n1 minus n comma n2 minus n and so on all these n1 n2 n3 all the way to nr are nothing but degrees of generators of the module m so we have a coherent sheaf finitely generated therefore since it is finitely gently generated it has some associated generators and you talk about their degree now we take the sheaf which we had on the previous slide, we shift it by D and then we are writing the long exact sequence. So when I say shifting by D, I mean there is actually a better operation described in Hartshorn where you just take tensor product and that helps shifting. So you see hi nd is zero by induction hypothesis. What is this sheaf L? So this sheaf L we have described in the previous slide. This is OPN minus ni. Now you shift by D. So you just copy the above down, but instead of minus ni, you have D minus ni. Now since D is greater than n naught we have already written that d is greater or equal to n naught so that would mean that d is greater or equal to n naught so and n naught is the soup so that implies d minus n i is greater or equal to minus n yeah and that would imply that this l d is zero because d minus n i has to be less than n to have any uh, non-trivial cohomology. 